it's Corey Hogs Whispers here this evening with you and I'm going to show you how to take apart an AMS Retriever. This one's a 610 Pro model and I'm just going to clean it up and oil it and put it back together and then we are going to put new line on the Retriever and tie it to a safety slide. Take this AMS reel apart. As you notice, I've already got the bottle unscrewed off the back. And there's really not much to it. You just got one, two, three, four, five screws to take out. Just a regular flathead screwdriver will do the trick. Put you back all of these screws out. This part, your handle, it will basically just pop off and this whole top plate will come off and then you can get to all your innards and it's good you know at least once a year at the end of the season or whatever to completely take this thing apart oil all the innards up if you got a little bit of axle grease I use that sometimes too on the gears and uh, just clean up any any dirt or anything you see in there while you're in there and then, then put it all back together and it makes the real just, I mean, it real silky smooth after you get done doing this, it's like it's brand new. So, I highly suggest it. Okay, now that I've already pretty much backed these screws out, I'm wanting to show you this process. I'll this top one right here, the one that I'm working on, this one right here is the longest one out of all of them, so you need to remember this screw right here. First thing I'll do is I'll just work it through hands. You gotta do nothing too crazy. This back piece right here comes just comes right out. Bring it down. And then the whole top plate is just your base plate. Set it over here. Right here's the part I'm talking about that you need to get, try to get that right there oiled up real good on those teeth on your wheel. And then inside here, this is where your crank handle is. So on the inside, I try to get a little bit of, you know, bearing grease or something in there. Definitely, maybe a little bit of oil if you ain't got bad grease. Try to throw you some oil up in there. There's, there's a bunch of little gears and what have you in there that you definitely use the the oil or grease. Then I also take a rag and see it's got a ring kind of around it here. I'll try to just clean all that up a little bit as I do this, and also on this base plate, I'll try to clean up around the edge here. On me right now, I got a little old school 3 of one oil. I'm just gonna shoot a good shot up in that back side of that crank handle and on those gears and on that wheel and the gears on it. Show sure you a good shot on them. And this wheel right there on the sides of it. I'm just gonna put it all back together. When you go to putting this back together, you get your gear teeth here down inside the back side of your crank handle. You'll just go in there and you'll feel it catch and it'll go all the way down. You can see how it's down. Now, right here on this metal part of this wheel, there's a tiny little groove that's, that's cut out right there, a little slot that'll be on one side of it. And on your back plate, you'll notice it's probably super hard to tell but on this side there's a, like a little extra piece of little extra piece of metal kind of over here on this side on the inside there you gotta match that piece of metal up to that slot that's cut out on this part of the wheel you 
can be a little tricky, but it's not nothing too crazy. There, I got it. When you go to put this part back in, notice it's got pegs on it on both sides there, little pegs. Those pegs will go in this slot right here. You see it's got a slot on both sides. You got it where it's like this. I'm gonna just kind of jimmy it in there a little bit. Okay, for I do anything else. I'm just going to go ahead and pre-start some of these these four smaller boats. Go one, two, three, and four. I'll probably see Get this one, this one, this one, and this one. Now what I want to do is take my crank handle. I'm going to take my reel handle here, and there's a slot on top of the reel. I'm going to come on the back side. I'm going to get that wheel and push down in there. Okay, now on this you just want to squeeze it in just a little bit. Don't get crazy with it. There we go. See how it snapped in? On the back side there's another one. Peg back there. And we got that open. Alright, now we got our wheel just kind of sitting there free floating. Then I'm going to take your bottle attachment. What you want to do with this. This is probably the hardest part. I'm going to Push it up in there like that. Now I'm gonna pop it down. There's a slot in the bottom of that. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a bolt that runs through, and you gotta get that up in there and then pull back down into that slot. And there's another slot that's in the top. And how you know you got it right is if you can look all the way through this hole. And now mine is lined up. And if, and if it's a little out, you can kind of just pull back or push forward on the back of this a little bit until you get it lined up. Then you'll take your long boat and you'll just kind of work it all the way through there. Now that I got this in, I'm going to go back over all my all my boats and just tighten them all down good and snug. Don't, don't over tighten. If you're having issues where your reel doesn't want to reel, it isn't reeling real smooth, you might want to loosen this front bolt and then you can just kind of get your fingers a hold of this front block and pull it up, pull it up a little bit. And then try to reel. And nine times out of ten, that'll take care of the issue. But if not, if it's still acting a little squirrely, push this up as far as it'll go, tighten this down a little bit, and then come back here to your back. On the bottom part of where your bottle screws in that goes inside there, there's a slot on it too. So we'll back this boat out a little bit and back this top one out a little bit and then try to work this around try to get it up just a hair and then tighten them back down a little you know just snug and then test your reel again I'm going to take my new line run it through my reel into the bottle and tie it to this peg okay, first thing you want to do get your line get your new line on is you just feed it through your reel, right through this hole, and you want it to come out the back like so. Feed it all the way through the bottle until we get it to come out the bottom hole there. Now you feed your line through your plug like so. And there's a slot cut out there. You notice, and I'll bring my line back through that slot. At the top side of the plug here, I want to tie me a knot. I'll do it just like I tie safety slides, which I'll show you again. Now what I want to do is I'm going to cut off this excess. I got quite a bit there. Now what I want to do is take my line to the other end and pull. Put my bottle on the back of the reel. Now I'm going to reel the reel just like you normally would to feed all my new line into my bottle. As you're reeling, you want to kind of keep your reel tilted at an up angle. That way your line will fall straight down into the bottom of the bottle. You don't want to overfill these reels and they'll tell you when you're overfilling them uh, it'll start spooling out the back and stuff all funny and you just pull your 
get it from the front and pull the extra slack back out till you get it right. Uh, now I got my bottle all filled. I'm just gonna cut my line off and we will tie this onto a safety slide. And now I got my line cut. Uh, I'm gonna do another safety slide tie here. Just feed it from the bottom of the safety slide. Your safety slide has that groove. Bring your line where it lays in that groove back through the other hole there. Let's see, mine's in the groove. I'm gonna pull down the slack to kind of work with here. Okay, now that I got this, I'm just gonna put a little, a little twist in it, like so. And then I'm going to feed this hole I got. It's always good to kind of leave yourself, you know, two or three inches there of play. Okay, now I'm going to cut off this excess a little bit, yeah, right about there. And you already see how it frayed when I cut it there. That's why I always, always burn the ends lighter. There we go. We don't want that stuff fraying out everywhere. Thanks for watching the video. Uh, please leave any comments you have below, give us a thumbs up, subscribe, we'll catch you in the next one.